So what I'm interested in now is, uh, has to do with uh, the fundamentals of quantum mechanics and particle physics and its relation with cosmology. By that I mean uh, we know that the universe uh, began as a very small object in which quantum effects might have been very important and in particular at the enriched energies which we will probably never be able to reach in, uh, in accelerators or in, uh, or in tabletop experiment or these kind of things and therefore it's, uh, it's a great opportunity to try and understand these fundamental issues. Uh, well, I got, I got into this, uh, the idea of uh, physics itself in, in, uh, in general and cosmology perhaps more in particular and, and, in, and quantum cosmology for what I'm currently doing. In, I think it was in the early 80s when I, uh, I was reading uh, um, a popular newspaper uh, which was completely dedicated to the, the controversy between Einstein and Bohr in the beginning of the 20th century. And so I decided to get interested in that and to, to try and go further and try to figure out what was really going on and then to maybe to try and contribute a little bit. So that's what uh, somehow sparked the, the, uh, the idea in me. And for the time being, I'm afraid I still am not uh, very much farther away than I was at the time because uh, quantum physics and the mysteries of it are still quite deep and still a little bit beyond my understanding but uh, at least I acquired the technical uh, understanding of it, if not uh, yet a full uh, satisfactory physical understanding of it. So I keep going then and, in, uh, and then I realized that uh, cosmology might be a very nice uh, playground for understanding these things because cosmology is, um, you see the thing is that uh, quantum uh, quantum mechanics is not really compatible with, uh, with the theory of the universe, of uh, cosmology, which is basically based on general relativity, which is the theory of gravity. And these two theories are basically not compatible, although we know that in the early universe they must have been compatible because they must have lived together. And so, of course, this is the best place to try and learn anything about that. And since now we are beginning to have some reasonable amount of data about that, uh, then it's really time to, to try and understand. Well, there is something quite simple to, simple to grasp and simple to explain in the sense of why it is that we are interested in these things. And it's absolutely impossible to understand. In fact, I don't think I understand. And in fact, there is a very, very uh, famous uh, quote by Richard Feynman saying that uh, nobody really understands quantum mechanics. And that's what I'm... Uh, involved in. And the very idea of it is to say that uh, the particles which we treat as ordinary particles in um, both in cosmology but in, in ordinary, uh, in ordinary uh, physics, particles have, uh, have trajectories normally. And in quantum mechanics it turns out that they don't, you don't treat them as having trajectories and in fact you don't describe any trajectories whatsoever. And in fact, it's harder than that because some people actually say explicitly and very strongly that there is no such thing as a particle trajectory. So this is really something that uh, a kid uh, can grasp really easily that uh, when you're um, playing around with an object, the object moves and it's here and there. And in quantum mechanics, when it goes to the, when you want to describe microscopic objects, uh, these objects are not here and there. They're actually, you, you, there is a chance that you are able to measure them at some stage, but you cannot say that they are at any place whatsoever. And that's exactly the situation which we, the, in, uh, in cosmology, in early universe cosmology, we have the same kind of situation where the universe was first of all in vacuum state, that, was, that means there was absolutely nothing whatsoever in the universe. Although this nothing whatsoever was actually doing something, it's not, uh, I mean, we, we have to, be very clear about that the fact that uh, vacuum is not nothingness somehow. Uh, vacuum is the minimum, uh, the minimum thing you can have, which is not nothing. And then this nothing, fortunately, it's not actually nothing because it, ended up, it evolved to the actual universe we observe now. So um, it does not have any trajectory whatsoever and it, uh, it does not uh, do anything, but we can measure it. That's the, the, mystery, the kind of mysterious things I was referring to before. I mean, they, it, nothing is actually happening particularly, but we can measure something and this something then eventually transformed itself into a classical system, which is the universe we see now. So this is, uh, this is the kind of impossible to understand system we are working on 
And this is also the, the, the system which evolved to be the universe we live in. And this is unfortunately the way nature works. So I don't know if it is unfortunate or fortunate, but it is the way it is anyway. And so we have to understand that. And clearly, I think I have, I've been quite clear on the fact that it's not possible to understand that. And it's, uh, so we need, we need more information on that. And that's why we are looking for it. And the thing is that when we try to understand these uh, very difficult topics, basically, as I said, I think we still don't understand what we're talking about for the last 80 years, more or less, or even a century ago, we started doing that. And, but uh, we are keeping discovering new things every day, which is uh, kind of weird. So now we are not really understanding any better, but we know a, little, uh, I mean a lot more, and we know we can describe how things evolved, how things um, happened, and so we can really describe the universe the way we see it, and we can predict things, even though we don't exactly know how it works. 